Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive channel. There's a few topics I wanna get into in this video, but I first wanna start off by talking about Jay-Z liking Doja Cat's tweet. And it's not really a big deal per se, but I do find it interesting that Jay-Z, who doesn't follow anybody on Twitter and normally isn't on social media, would go out of his way to like a tweet that Doja made. Now I'm gonna actually show you the tweet that he liked. So there's a Nicki fan on Twitter named Felix D. Mirage who actually created this cover art of Doja Cat, Nicki Minaj, and Megan Thee Stallion together on the cover of Rolling Stone. And Doja Cat responded to this and said, fire. Now Jay-Z went on his Twitter account and he liked her tweet. He liked it and unliked it. Now, some people were making wild speculations that Jay-Z was trying to hit on Doja Cat, and I don't know how liking a tweet can mean that, but anyway, other people thought that Jay-Z was maybe confirming that Doja, Nicki, and Megan are three of the hottest female rappers in the game right now. So maybe that was Jay-Z giving his stamp of approval to all three women. Now, other people thought that Jay-Z was low-key standing Doja Cat. And I personally believe that he is a fan of Doja and him liking her tweet was very strategic because Jay-Z hasn't been active on his Twitter account in almost two years. Also, he doesn't follow anybody on Twitter. So it's clear that he was lurking on Doja's page. He saw that tweet and he liked it because he's a fan of Doja Cat. And I think he probably wants her back on his team. If you don't know, Doja was signed to Jay-Z's management company called Rock Nation, but she did part ways with Rock Nation. And ever since then, her career has blown up. Doja has done a lot to promote herself and also her team at RCA has been doing a lot to get her in certain places. So she has a really good team behind her, which is why we see more of her now. And also she has a solid fan base that she herself worked hard to build. She went from being a more obscure artist to now being one of the hottest artists on the scene right now. And Jay-Z is looking at her like, hmm, she would be a good asset to Rock Nation. She was on Rock Nation before, but she wasn't as popular. Now that she has more popularity, Jay-Z wants her on there again because he likes ready-made artists. This is why he sought out Megan Thee Stallion. When Megan Thee Stallion became more established, he was like, hmm, I need her on Rock Nation because she could benefit my company and in turn, I could benefit her career. That's how he got Megan, and he's trying to get Doja back on his team again, but I don't think it's going to work because Doja tried Rock Nation before, and apparently it didn't take her to where she wanted to go, so now she's been doing her own thing, and what she's been doing has been working, so she doesn't necessarily need Rock Nation at this point. Anyway, let me move on to the next topic and talk about P. Diddy. Now, Diddy hosted a dance-a-thon on Instagram Live to raise money for all the healthcare workers working overtime to treat patients with the COVID-19. And while he was on Instagram Live, several celebrities made an appearance to help him raise money. And one of those celebrities that appeared on his live was Lizzo. Now, when Lizzo went on live, she started dancing and started twerking and the sun started to move away from the screen and that's when p diddy came on there and stopped the music and told lizzo to chill it's oh sorry 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 i'm sorry sunday let's play I'm something sorry. a little bit family friendly i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> oh no 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 <laughs> let's do something fun sorry we don't play that kind of play something i can bop to yeah i know play yeah, juice by lizzo Juice by Lizzo. Juice by Lizzo. Let's go. Let's buy. Now, I will say this. I did think Lizzo's dance was inappropriate. I don't think she should have done that on live because there's a time and a place for everything. Even Megan Thee Stallion didn't twerk. And y'all know Megan likes to twerk, but she kept it classy because she knew that it wasn't the appropriate time to do that. And I do think Lizzo should have known that as well, but she didn't. And that's why Diddy stopped her. And I don't blame him for stopping her from doing that. However, I have an issue with Diddy trying to make Lizzo feel bad for twerking when he was sitting up front and center watching Drea twerk on live. Didn't he say this was a family friendly live? So why was he allowing Drea to twerk to back that thing up 
but had an issue with Lizzo twerking. I want you all to look at the clear difference from how Diddy reacted to Lizzo and how he reacted to Drea. Love Radio, Steve Love Radio. Yo, Drea, we proud of you. Shout out to Direct Relief, and you killed that. I think I think that was one of the top performances <laughs> of the night. We had like another hour for off. real. I think you may get the, 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 the trophy for just, just being free and having fun. We appreciate Thank you. We appreciate you. the love. Oh, oh sorry, 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 sorry. I'm sorry. Sunday. Let's play I'm something sorry. a little bit family friendly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Let's do something fun. Sorry. We well, don't play that kind of play something I can bop to. Yeah, no. Play no, Juice by Lizzo. I'm about to. So did y'all see the difference between Diddy's reaction with Lizzo and Drea? It's very clear that there's a double standard there. It was inappropriate for Lizzo to twerk because she's a big girl. Let's be honest, Diddy didn't want to have her twerking on his live because she doesn't have the body type that he finds attractive. Now he was entertained with Drea because that's who he finds attractive. So he let her twerk and do her thing. And honestly, I was giving him the side eye. I personally think that he should have treated Drea the same way he treated Lizzo. If this was a family friendly live, like Diddy said, nobody should have been twerking. And also, they shouldn't have been playing songs like Back That Thing Up. Back That Thing Up is made for twerking, so I don't know why they would play that song, but I thought that was very weird. After this whole thing happened, Diddy did receive backlash for how he treated Lizzo, and he did respond to the backlash on social media, and he said this. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, check this out, y'all. The whole Combs cartel, we just got finished eating. We tired from dancing. Hey, yo, there's one thing that I want to make clear. Like, 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 like my, 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 my queen, my sister Lizzo, when I stopped the music, it was because it had a lot of curses in there, not because she was twerking. She's one of the best twerkers in the world, okay? So let's keep that clear. It wasn't about twerking. You're allowed to twerk on Easter. It was about, it was a lot of cursing in the record, and I don't need child services knocking on my door right now. You understand? <laughs> so that's why I stopped the record. But Lizzo, we love you. Love and you. everybody, love you. Hey, yo, everybody stop looking for the negative. Look at the positive, man. Let's go to the love. Diddy knows good and well he's lying through his teeth. <laughs> if the song that Lizzo was dancing to was so explicit, why did he allow the explicit version of Back That Thing Up to play while Drea was twerking? I don't get it, I just don't get it. But we all know the reason why Diddy treated Lizzo differently than he treated Drea. Lizzo is a big girl and Drea is not. That's the reason why. But honestly, I think they should have gotten the same treatment. Neither one of them should have been twerking on that lie because it just wasn't the right time or the place. Anyway, let me move on and talk about the movie that had every church kid glued to their seats. And that movie is the Clark Sisters First Lady of Gospel biopic that premiered over the weekend on Lifetime. And I have to say this, this movie was the best biopic that I have ever seen on Lifetime ever. For those who don't know, the Clark Sisters are a legendary gospel group that have pretty much influenced a lot of our favorite artists and singers. The Clark Sisters have also been a huge influence on Mary J. Blige, Queen Latifah, and Missy Elliott, which is why they came together and decided to produce a biopic about the Clark Sisters, and they did a great job executing this project. The singing was absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal. And I have to really give it up to all the actresses because they did a great job, especially Anjanu Ellis. Anjanu actually played the mother of the Clark sisters, Maddie Moss Clark, and her performance was honestly Emmy worthy. It was very riveting and very believable, and it showed how intense Maddie Moss Clark was. The way she treated her daughters was almost similar to how Joe Jackson treated the Jackson Five. Now, she might not have been beating her daughters the way Joe Jackson was beating his kids, but she definitely was very intense and very strict and she didn't have no issues throwing her shoe at somebody if they missed a note. <laughs> so Maddie Moss Clark was nothing to play with and I think her story in this movie was so important because it showed that she was the foundation for the Clark sisters. 
And also it showed her personal struggles as a woman in ministry and as a wife. I mean, she was married to a pastor who was beating her. And there were bishops in the church who didn't like the fact that she and her daughters were becoming too successful. So she dealt with a lot in this movie. And also I found Denise Clark and Twinkie Clark's storylines very, very interesting as well because the movie went into more detail about their personal lives. And it also showed the complex relationship that they had with their mother. Denise Clark in particular had a very strained relationship with her mother because she wasn't like the other sisters. She wanted to live her own life outside of her mother's control. And unfortunately she was ostracized because she had several children outside of wedlock. And one of them was with a bishop in the church. And she actually revealed this during her interview with a YouTuber named Larry Reed. If you ever get a chance, I would say watch the first part of her interview with Larry Reed live. It was very interesting because Denise spilled a lot of tea. She talked about being pressured to have an abortion, and she also vaguely implied that some of the other sisters may have allegedly gone through with their abortions. Not only that, she talked about how badly her family treated her while they were on the road, which is why she decided to quit the group. So there was a lot to her story that I found very interesting, and I also found Twinkie's story interesting as well. Twinkie had a complicated relationship with her mother because her mother was very dependent on her. Twinkie was the organ player in the family, and she's also the one who wrote and produced most of the Clark sisters' hits. So Twinkie is the musical genius in the family, and her mother really relied on her and had her traveling everywhere to different churches, but it became an issue for her because she realized that she didn't have her own life. She was too busy living out her mother's dreams that she didn't have anything left to herself. So she got to a point where she quit the group to live her own life, and she ended up getting married to this man who was really no good for her he was emotionally abusive he didn't have a job and he even had the nerve to push the mother maddie moss clark down on the ground that whole scene was just a mess a hot mess there were some messy moments in this movie but all in all, the movie was really good. I really enjoyed it, and it really made me appreciate the Clark sisters. And there was so much more that happened in the movie that I didn't talk about, but you know, I just wanted to talk about some of the parts that stood out to me. Anyway, tell me what y'all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.